contracts might not have stopped the last massacre or the one before that or the one before that so why bother trying I reject that thinking can't stop every act of violence, every act of evil in the world. But maybe we could try to stop one act of evil, one act of violence. Some of you may recall at the same time that Sandy Hook happened, a, a disturbed person in China took a knife and tried to kill with a knife a bunch of children in China. But most of them survived because they didn't have access to a powerful weapon. We maybe can't save everybody, but we could save some. Just as we don't prevent all traffic accidents, but we take steps to try to reduce traffic accidents. As Ronald Reagan once said, if mandatory background checks could save more lives, it would be well worth making it the law of the land. The bill before Congress three years ago met that test. But unfortunately, too many senators failed theirs. In fact, we know that background checks make a difference. After Connecticut passed a law requiring background checks and gun safety courses, gun deaths decreased by 40%, 40%. Meanwhile, since Missouri repealed a law requiring comprehensive background checks and purchase permits, gun deaths have increased to an almost 50% higher than the national average. One study found, unsurprisingly, that criminals in Missouri now have easier access to guns. And the evidence tells us that in states that require background checks, law-abiding Americans don't find it any harder to purchase guns whatsoever. Their guns have not been confiscated, their rights have not been infringed. And that's just the information we have access to. With more research, we could further improve gun safety, just as with more research, we've reduced traffic fatalities enormously over the last 30 years. We do research when cars, food, medicine, even toys harm people so that we make them safer. And you know what? Research, science, those are good things. They work. <laughs> they do. But think about this, when it comes to an inherently deadly weapon, uh, 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 nobody argues that guns are potentially deadly. Weapons that kill tens of thousands of Americans every year, Congress actually voted to make it harder for public health experts to conduct research into gun violence. Made it harder to collect data and facts and develop strategies to reduce gun violence. Even after San Bernardino, they've refused to make it harder for terrorist suspects who can't get on a plane to buy semi-automatic weapons. That's not right. <laughs> that can't be right. So the gun lobby may be holding Congress hostage right now, but they cannot hold America hostage. We do not have to accept this carnage as the price of food.
Now, I want to be clear. Congress still needs to act. The folks in this room will not rest until Congress does. Because once Congress gets on board with common sense gun safety measures, we can reduce gun violence a whole lot more. But we also can't wait. Until we have a Congress that's in line with the majority of Americans, there are actions within my legal authority that we can take to help reduce gun violence and save more lives. Actions that protect our rights and our kids. After Sandy Hook, Joe and I worked together with our teams and we put forward a whole series of executive actions to try to tighten up the existing rules and systems that we had in place. But today we want to take it a step further. So let me outline what we're going to be doing. Number one, anybody in the business of selling firearms must get a license and conduct background checks or be subject to criminal prosecutions. show, not where you do it, but what you do. We're also expanding background checks to cover violent criminals who try to buy some of the most dangerous firearms by hiding behind trusts and corporations and various cutouts. We're also taking steps to make the background check system more efficient. Under the guidance of Jim Comey and the FBI, uh, Deputy Director Tom Brandon at uh, AF, uh, ATF. We're going to hire more folks to process applications faster, and we're going to bring an outdated background check system into the 21st century. And these steps will actually lead to a smoother process for law-abiding gun owners a smoother process for responsible gun dealers, a stronger process for protecting the people from, uh, the public from dangerous people. So that's number one. Number two, we're going to do everything we can to ensure the smart and effective enforcement of gun safety laws that are already on the books, which means we're going to add 200 more ATF agents and investigators. We're going to require firearms dealers to report more or lost, uh, more lost or stolen guns on a timely basis. We're working with advocates to protect victims of domestic abuse from gun violence, where too often... Is where too often people are not getting the protection that they need. Number three, we're going to do more to help those suffering from mental illness get the help that they need. So... High-profile mass shootings tend to shine a light on those few mentally unstable people who inflict harm on others, but the truth is, is that nearly two in three gun deaths are from suicides. So a lot of our work is to prevent people from hurting themselves. That's why we made sure that the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, <laughs> finally, uh, under the that law made sure that uh, treatment for mental health was covered the same as treatment for any other illness. And that's why we're going to invest $500 million to expand access to treatment across the country. It's also why we're going to ensure that federal mental health records are submitted to the background check system and remove barriers that prevent states from reporting relevant information. If we can continue to destigmatize mental health issues, get folks proper care, and fill gaps in the background check system, then we can spare more families the pain of losing a loved one to suicide. 
And for those in Congress who so often rush to blame mental illness for mass shootings as a way of avoiding action on guns, here's your chance to support these efforts. Put your money where your mouth is. Number four, we're going to boost gun safety technology. Now, today, many gun injuries and deaths are the result of legal guns that were stolen or misused or discharged accidentally. In 2013 alone, more than 500 people lost their lives to gun accidents, and that includes 30 children younger than five years old. Now, in the greatest, most technologically advanced nation on earth, there is no reason for this. We need to develop new technologies that make guns safer. If we can set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint, why can't we do the same thing for our guns? If there's an app that can help us find a missing tablet, which happens to me often, the older I get. If we can do it for your iPad, there's no reason we can't do it with a stolen gun. If a child can't open a bottle of aspirin, we should make sure that they can't pull a trigger on a gun. All right? So we're going to advance research. We're going to work with the private sector to update firearms technology. And some gun retailers are already stepping up by refusing to finalize a purchase without a complete background check or by refraining from selling semi-automatic weapons or high-capacity magazines. And I hope that more retailers and more manufacturers join them. Because they should care as much as anybody about a product that now kills almost as many Americans as car accidents. I make this point because None of us can do this alone. I think Mark made that point earlier. All of us should be able to work together to find a balance that declares the rest of our rights are also important. Second Amendment rights are important, but there are other rights that we care about as well. And we have to be able to balance them. Because our right to worship freely and safely, that right was denied to Christians in Charleston, South Carolina. And that was denied Jews in Kansas City. And that was denied Muslims in Chapel Hill and Sikhs in Oak Creek. They had rights too. to peaceful assembly. That right was robbed from moviegoers in Aurora and Lafayette. Our unalienable right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, those rights were stripped from college kids in Blacksburg and Santa Barbara and from high schoolers at Columbine and, and from first graders in Newtown. First graders. And from every family who, who never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. And by the way, it happens on the streets of Chicago every day. So, all of us need to demand a Congress brave enough to stand up 
to the gun lobby's lies, all of us need to stand up and protect its citizens. All of us need to demand governors and legislators and businesses do their part to make our community safer. We need the wide majority of responsible gun owners who grieve with us every time this happens and feel like your views are not being properly represented to join with us to demand something better. And we need voters who want safer gun laws and who are disappointed in leaders who stand in their way to remember come election time. I mean, some of this is just simple math. Yes, the gun lobby is loud and it is organized in defense of making it effortless for guns to be available for anybody, anytime. Well, you know what, the rest of us, we all have to be just as passionate. We have to be just as organized in defense of our kids. This is not that complicated. The reason Congress blocks laws is because they want to win elections. And if you make it hard for them to win an election, if they block those laws, they'll change course, I promise you. it will be hard and it won't happen overnight it won't happen during this Congress it won't happen during my presidency but a lot of things don't happen overnight a woman's right to vote didn't happen overnight liberation of African Americans didn't happen overnight. LGBT rights has decades worth of work. So just because it's hard, that's no excuse not to try. And if you have any, any doubt as to why you should feel that fierce urgency of now, think about what happened three weeks ago. Xavion Dobson was a sophomore at Fulton High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. He played football, beloved by his classmates and his teachers. His own mayor called him one of their city's success stories. The week before Christmas, he headed to a friend's house to play video games. He wasn't in the wrong place at the wrong time. He hadn't made a bad decision. He was exactly where any other kid would be, your kid, my kids. And then gunmen started firing. And Xavion, who was in high school, hadn't even gotten started in life, dove on top of three girls to shield them from the bullets. And he was shot in the head and the girls were spared. He gave his life to save theirs. An act of heroism a lot bigger than anything we should ever expect from a 15 year old. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. We are not asked to do what Xavion Dobson did. We're not asked to have shoulders that big, a heart that strong, reactions that quick. I'm not asking people to have that same level of courage or sacrifice or love. But if we love our kids and care about their prospects, and if we love this country and care about its future, 
And we can find the courage to vote. We can find the courage to get mobilized and organized. We can find the courage to cut through all the noise and do what a sensible country would do. That's what we're doing today. And tomorrow we should do more. And we should do more the day after that. And if we do, we'll leave behind a nation that's stronger than the one we inherited and worthy of the sacrifice of a young man like Xavier. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you A passionate and emotional President Barack Obama wrapping up his remarks in the East Room right now. Tearing up as he spoke about the victims, the rights being lost, and the victims of gun violence, especially those first graders at Sandy Hook Elementary, scored back in December 2012. The president is often called out the worst day of his presidency, demanding action now, saying that the gun lobby may be holding Congress hostage, it cannot hold America hostage, that he lines up a series of executive actions to expand and improve background checks to enforce the laws already on the books and through gun safety technology, more research into mental health. The president so often frustrated on this issue, so often allows his passion to show. Also, referencing the opposition, I want to go to our Chief Congressional Correspondent, Mary Bruce, uh, also covering the speech this morning. And the president referenced that opposition, already completely fierce.